so this document's now glowed out foundational legislation that's relied upon for these police applications to be heard in the first place. And we can see how at the very end of a period of detention, the police have rushed in and attempted to put together an application that would be within these guidelines according to them and then pushed as hard as they could from their police prosecution to get these installed, made as orders. Interim orders would have been issued on the day, making that order start from that hour and they would have been turned into permanent orders within the 28 days and carried on for the requested three years under the 55 anomaly orders that would have come along with it, which is where the police, uh, believing that they have this upper hand in that they can surveil anybody that opposes some of their policy or their enactment of the policy of state, which would go against their oath that they'd taken. The principles articulated in the case law. 14. I gratefully adopt the summary of the principles to be applied at an interim hearing set out by Johnson J in the state of New South Wales versus fired pre preliminary 2020 New South Wales SC 1681 at 44.52.44. The, the task of the court at the preliminary hearing is to apply the statutory formula in S24.5 concerning the appointment of a psychiatrist and a psychologist to carry out examinations of the defendant and at S27.B concerning the making of an ISO. 45. Before making the orders sought by the plaintiff, the court must determine that the defendant's current custody or supervision will expire before the proceedings are determined, S27A, and that the matters alleged in the supporting documentation would, if proved, justify the making of an ESO, SS245 and 27B. 46. In State of New South Wales versus Naaman, number 2, the Court of Appeal, Baston, McFarlane and Leeming, JJA, described the court's task at a preliminary hearing as follows. At 17, my emphasis, broadly speaking, the Act provides for a preliminary application to be made by the state during which time interim orders, both for supervision and detention, and applications for orders appointing qualified psychologists and psychiatrists to conduct examinations of the person may be made. An order for extended supervision may only be made if there are reports from at least two psychologists or psychiatrists who have examined the person, see more particularly S24-5, the court in determining whether or not to make the order must have regard to those reports, S25-3A. Broadly speaking, the test for making interim orders is that the matters alleged in the supporting documentation would, if proved, justify the making of an extended supervision order. S27. That determination will ordinarily be made in advance of the reports from the psychologists and psychiatrists, and in any event is a lower standard than applies to making of an extended supervision order. So she's pointing out that the court is pre all of these decisions, doesn't have the skills to perform these activities 
and therefore will make orders without all of those things being interim until later an extended order could replace said interim order and she would have to be satisfied that it would be worth putting that extended order in place at the time she decides whether it's worth putting the interim order in place. 47. This statutory interlocutory process exists in legislation intended to protect the community from, as she says, an application that be made by the state. A lower standard applies at a preliminary hearing to determine whether that application should proceed further where the court will be assisted by expert psychiatric and psychological reports prepared after examination of the defendant. At a final hearing, the court will have the benefit of the reports by court-appointed experts with the THRO Act provisions to be applied at that hearing by reference to all evidence adduced by the plaintiff and the defendant. Definition? Adduce. Adduced, past tense. Adduced, past participle. Cite as evidence. A number of factors are adduced to explain the situation. So the justice is saying all the evidence added together from all the parties concerned. 48. This approach does not overlook the potential adverse consequences for the defendant if orders are made at the preliminary hearing. Rather, it reflects the statutory two-stage process where a lower hurdle applies at the interlocutory stage. Now, interlocutory application in a courtroom could be uh, submitted over a single matter within a matter, and this medical intervention could be brought up as an interlocutory application during a larger case. 49. The court looks at the allegations and documentation through the lens of the plaintiff's case and takes them at their highest when deciding whether the test articulated in Section 27B THRO Act has been made good in all the circumstances of the case. State of New South Wales versus Narman, number 2, 2018, NSWSC 1329. State of New South Wales versus Elsmatua, 2019, NSWSC 186 at 4. 50. In undertaking the assessment at the preliminary hearing, the court is not involved in weighing up the documentation or resolving any conflicts, inconsistencies or uncertainties which appear in the documentation. State of New South Wales versus Sturgeon, 2019, NSWSC 559 at 6. So, the documentation provided can't have those inconsistencies in it, otherwise the judge is now ignorant herself of what you're asking for. And then therefore demonstrating that back on you, you have an incompetency to be able to provide that to the justice. And that, that's already documented in several court cases that we've just gone through. 51. It is necessary for the plaintiff to allege certain facts which, if proved, would lead to a conclusion that would justify making an ESO. State of New South Wales versus LMR, number 2, 2018, NSWSC, 1034 at 7 to 10. 52. Section 27B, THRO Act, requires attention to be given to the matters alleged in the supporting documentation. A matter alleged should have some proper foundation and could not include matters of rumour, possibilities, unfounded in fact, or wholly unsupported speculation. State of New South Wales versus Alum, 
2020 NSWSC 295 at 159. Making accusations that are based on rumour or unfounded facts and speculation is basically the reason for having to go through this process before you can enact your quackery from a state perspective upon an individual. This is now outlined because this protects everyone at this. This is very, very dark stuff that these police are requesting to be done to someone, which we will find out is over their beliefs. And those beliefs may have some fact to them. Um, and that's the ignorant thing here, in that justice is recognised. A lot of things that the police have already done to push, push, push and jump the gun, like we said before.